Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Welcome back to my channel. I have a box opening for you today and a product review. So I was co contacted by Arteza. And um, they sent me some product to try out. And that is their 72 count watercolor pencils expert. Artist quality, rich and vibrant colors. If you haven't used watercolor pencils, I think you're going to be in for a treat. I have used them before, I love them. And let's open this up and get started. I wanted to open on uh, camera because I wanted you to see my first impressions. I love the metal case and I love that the size of it. I have only had one other brand of watercolor pencils in the past, and it all the pencils are single layer in this really, really long case, which would mean you really can't take it with you if you're traveling. So let's open this up, and I love the uh, watercolor look on the cover as well. So it is hinged, and we have these plastic trays, these little, oops, sorry, <laughs> thumb notches here. <clears throat> I want to show how many are in here. Okay, three trays of these, <clears throat> and you can see right now how well organized they are. There is sort of a blunt tip. If you want them sharpened any further than this, you could sharpen them. I haven't tried that yet, as I'm just now opening. Love the organization and everything. Um, I think they have them arranged by category as well as color, like there's some purples here and purples here, but I noticed that these are some fluorescents here, so... You know, you could rearrange these however you want. I'm looking at this. If there's a number, yes. They have a number right here, a name, Mint. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Mint and AOA030. And it has the two, two pluses here have to do with light fastness and color fastness. So, um, some different companies use different... Um, different methods of measuring their color fastness. Pink has three pluses. Okay, <laughs> I can turn this sideways. <laughs> okay, the first thing I want to do is look straight down the barrel because I know with a lot of my Prismacolor pencils, the lead or the color is not directly center in the pencil. And this looks really good. Let's pick up more than one and look at them. That looks perfect center, absolutely perfect. Um, there is this way of pulling it out of the tin here, but I think I could pu put some tape or something on the end here so I could pull it up more easily. It might be a little more um, <clears throat> helpful in the future. Okay, let's play around with some of these. And actually, I'm going to leave them out so that I can see what I have. They sent me some of their watercolor paper. So if you're going to use watercolor pencils, because the water is involved, you really should use some watercolor paper. And their watercolor paper comes in cold press and hot press. And this is cold press, which means that it should be slightly more bumpy, um, the surface of the paper, which means it has more tooth or can grab your colors more easily. So if you're coloring with color pencils, watercolor pencils, anything like that it would um, it would give it traction so to speak and you'd be able to lay the color down better but if you need it to be smoother uh, you can get the hot press 32 sheets so if you look at how, how thick this pad is and it's only 32 sheets which means they are very thick and this feels really sturdy Wow and uh, oh and one side is a little more smooth than the other I know you can't really tell on on camera but this side seems a little more smooth than the other side and we lay that out there and one of the things now I'm not so-called artist one of the things I like to do is to um, stamp and then use watercolor pencils to color in my area so let's get this which is Simon Says Stamp Intense Black and this says it is waterproof 
fast drying and waterproof. Um, if you're in a really big hurry, sometimes you can heat set your project. Heat, uh, after you've stamped, you can heat set it so that you can make sure that you really get it com the ink completely dry before you start using your, your water on it. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, um, I see I missed a little bit right there. So I'm going to do another image and see if I get it better the second time around. I've had this stamp forever, and it is, if I can find it, L056 Large Petal Flower by Whipper Snapper Designs Incorporated. So I've had it for a long time. Okay, so let's pick out, let's see, mm -hmm. let's pick out a couple of greens that we want to use for the leaf. I'm going to go with some bright colors because I'm going to make this more of a bright project. I'm going to use the darker one. I'm going to assume the light is coming from this way on my flower. So the left and bottom will be kind of darker. And color the color some lighter green right here. Now with watercolor pencils, I don't usually color in the entire surface of my object because I like to leave it blank. So as I'm pulling the color, pulling the ink throughout the uh, the stem here, It'll be really light here, but darker here. So let's go down here. I'm gonna get a little shade right here because of the fact that the stem is going to be hiding some of this leaf, I think. I'm loving these just as even as colored pencils right now. They are very creamy. And I'm going to give it a little bit of darkness under the um, petals of the flower because they're kind of in shade there. And then I'm going to go a little more with the light green right there. Okay, remember the sun is coming down this way, so I'm thinking this part is going to be the darkest of my leaf. And the shade or the shadow from being under this flower petal. I'm going to get a little extra color down here and across there. I'm going to get this little, this little vein there. That's a vein. That's what it is. <laughs> look at that vein, a little extra color there. Okay, now let's look at our flower here and what colors you want to use. I want to use, uh, one of my favorite colors to use are these kind of orangey yellows when it comes to flowers. Now you can feel free to color in your entire image. Um, this is just my personal preference where I leave some of it white. And it's also a good way to test the pencils and see how much um, pigment I need to lay down on the paper. And let's go ahead and go with a, a pink kind of like we had on the stamp itself. Let's see what colors. little bright. I think I'm going to stick with, this is really light. I'm not sure if this uh, color, it is a little darker than what the lead looks like. Okay, let's use this one. This is such a light pink that I think I'm going to carry it throughout quite a bit of this, these petals. thinking about this in here. Let's just call this a solid yellow with a little bit of darkening down here. Okay, 
Alrighty, so oops, we should get our little um, heart going here. I'm just going to use one color on this. And then keep in mind that um, there's two ways that I'm shading right now. <clears throat> one is to use a dark color and then use a lighter color next to it. In this case, I'm using a dark color and then I'm just coloring more lightly around it instead of using a second color on the inside. So you can get a paint brush and some water or you could use a water brush such as this, which is like a little capsule filled with water and you just start coloring with it. And I like to have a rag handy so I can blot this off. Let me make sure I've got some good water going there. I'm going to start with my lighter color, which is the pink. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here and center and I'm going to take that dark color and kind of pull it into the project here. So it is dissolving and turning this into watercolor paint as I go. And I'm pulling it up into the white space on my flower. So start. I start with my darks. I loosen that up, get it nice and wet, and then I'm pulling it up into my petal here. So even if you're not an artist or you don't consider yourself to be an artist, but you're still creative and you like making cards or making embellishments, and you want to feel like an artist, this is a great way to do it because it gives you a nice watercolor quality without trying to just blend and paint an image all by yourself. So you can use your stamped images. Just make sure your ink pad says it's waterproof. And how much you add water to this depend um, will affect how much you're going to get as far as blending, as far as the darkness of your color. I'm just pulling this in here, right here, and I don't have to go all the way to the end of my petal. I can leave this part white because, as I said, my sun is kind of coming down from there, and I think that these parts of my petals, the outer edge here, are going to be really nice and pale. So I can just do that, and I can go back over here and reactivate. If I think I need to blend it a little more, I can add more water and reactivate some of that. Then you want to just wipe off, you can see here, if there's any pink coming out, you want to wipe off that color before you move on to your next one. So I'm going to do this green here. Oh, this is just beautiful. So you can see by not coloring that part of the stem, how I have allowed it to really be highlighted there. I don't have to add any white on you know, after this is dry. You can take a white gel pen and you can highlight areas if you wish. Now I'm just going to loosen this up here, get that colored pencil there moving. And you see by getting adding the water, you lose the, uh, the graininess of the fact that you're um, coloring on textured paper. Now, how much, you know, do I want a lot of white? I can leave it like it is, or if I want it all green, I can keep pulling my color right out into that. I'm going to cover all of this with green and then pull this down a little bit. There we go. Again, you can always go back over and bring out some more of the rich color pigment by just getting it wet again. And I am really happy with how this is turning out. Give it a little squeeze, get some water down to the tip here. I like to use a rag instead of um, paper towels when I craft because this I can wash. And whereas a paper towel just gets thrown away into the trash bin. Now I can see that I have too much water here, so I, you can see I just quickly went over my towel, my rag there and took some off because I wanted that the white right there. And if you need to correct anything, just wipe that off. I think I probably got these on Amazon or something, these water brushes. So there is an example right there. Really impressed with it. That has been my primary use of water. Oops, sorry. Watercolor pencils has been... Uh, stamping an image and coloring it in. 
Now I realized that I had just added some yellow right here and I didn't get it wet. So let's do that. And I also didn't do the center of the flower here. And I'm not really pushing. I'm, my tip is just touching the surface of my paper. I'm not pushing down at all because it's a very gentle brush. Now I'm bringing some of that color up. It's very, um, it's, these are very rich colors. I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing right here. So what I'm going to do is let that dry and um, in order for it to be, you know, I don't want it to get reactivated if it gets damp. So I'm going to seal the, cover, the, the front of that the surface of that before I cut it out and then I'm going to make a card with it okay but in the meantime I want to try some some other things with these uh, pencils one of the things I wanted to try was to test out sharpening the end and seeing just how fine of a point I could get on there <laughs> I'm a mess and that is beautiful look at that now that I'm using a Repesco pencil sharpener and they are hard to come by now. I don't know um, how to get them. I will leave you a video down below where I reviewed them, but look at the beauty of that. And this shows you the difference between how it came sharpened and what I did for it. So this obviously is if you need to do a really, really fine area on your paper. But normally if you do that, you're going to have to make sure that you color in softly. See, I'm coloring softly, it's not breaking. If I were to push hard, it may break, okay? So another thing I wanna show about watercolor pencils or any colored pencils, I'm going to start coloring here. And as I move to the right, I am going to add less and less pressure. Okay, then I'm going to take another color which blends well with that. I'm gonna start over here pushing rather firmly and as I come to the center I'm going to add less and less pressure and it's one way to blend your colors out like that and so with a watercolor so again you can do this with colored pencils but with this let's get this damp and pull it over And now I'm going to come from this way and try to blend those together. So you can see that if you were doing like a, a flower that you wanted two colors on, how well that blends. It's just beautiful. Overall, I'd say I'm really impressed with these. The price point is amazing. Um, the only drawback with Arteza would be that you wouldn't be able, they're not um, single stock, meaning if you use the one color up, you can't just go somewhere and buy just the one color. But, you know, for this case and for the quality of this um, art supply, it's amazing. And I think that they have put their price point extremely well there for their consumers. And this is artist quality and I mean, even if um, even if you were looking to get these for your children, that would be great too. But, you know, adults will enjoy these thoroughly, thoroughly. So I'm thinking, again, all I would need to do is maybe put some washi from here out on the tin so that it would be easy to pull them out from here. Now, they also have this... Um, color chart at the back you could arrange your pencils in these according to that uh, you know let me come back out if you don't like having some yellow here some there and some here you could just put them kind of in this order although they do have a little bit more yellows here and here they're arranged pretty well and um, they have the names and the codes and numbers right here it says, join the Arteza Club and get 20% off your next purchase. And there's a QR code. There's a QR code for helpful tips. Make sure uh, you look at the video description box down below. And when I say that, I say that in almost every one of my videos. Underneath your video is all the information we type up about the video, including links, including other videos, 
including more information you might need to know, uh, things that we forgot to say in the video. You should always look at that. Uh, whether you're on your phone, uh, your tablet device, or your computer, as soon as you're looking at the video, down below it has the title of it, and there's usually a little upside-down triangle for you to click, or it says See More, or something like that. So click that. You will get all the links. You will get a link to um, their website and to this specific product here. Um, I think you're going to love these. I'm really impressed with these. Um, I love that this is... You could travel with this. This would fit really well in a suitcase, but you could also just take out your favorite colors and put them in a pencil case if that would make you happy. And they are gorgeous. I'm loving how creamy they are. Um, I have, when it comes to any kind of colored pencil, watercolor pencils, I like them to be creamy. I don't like to color and feel like I'm using a number two pencil that's hard and scratchy. And this went down very creamy, and if I hadn't been using watercolor paper, I bet it wouldn't have been grainy at all, which we can test right now without, um, let's just test that on a piece of paper. This is my scrap paper right here. And the reason it was grainy on the watercolor paper is because of the, what we call, tooth. And so let's zoom in again right here how grainy or bumpy the color looks. If you see here how smooth that is, it's because the paper is smooth. Now I have in the past used just regular firm cardstock to do watercolor pencils. It's not quite the same, but you know, you have to be careful because it could buckle when you use your water on it. So what you could do is, after you've done this, make sure it's completely dry and it doesn't take as much water too. And it doesn't blend as well because it seems to, um, because the paper doesn't have any tooth or absorption, it's more slimy or slick, slick surface. Whereas this is made for watercolor papers. And so it, the blending is absolutely perfect on this. I forgot to mention, I told you we were going to seal this. I'm going to use the micro glaze from Judy Kins. It's the same thing as what Tim Holtz is carrying. I'm just going to put a little bit on my finger and rub that in, and it kind of waterproofs the surface. It doesn't take much at all. I have two products that do the same thing. They're in my shop, and I will give you the link down below. Judykins is a small one. If you're not sure whether or not you are going to need this product, you can start with a small. And then um, just lightly buff it with a soft cloth or soft rag. I happen to have this sitting there. I know I'm going to have to throw it away, but just use something soft. There you go. And let's cut that out and make a card. I think what I'm going to do is leave a white border around this. I think that's going to be really pretty for what I want to do. So you don't want to use this waterproofing on this. If you think that there's any chance you might want to come back and add a little more color to it. Let's say that I looked at my design and I thought I wanted to add another color dimension on it, like maybe purple on the petal uh, edges and pull that into the pink. If I was going to do that, I wouldn't be putting this waterproofing down. Doesn't that look like it's been colored almost with Copic markers? It's so beautiful. Okay, now I think what I want to do next is I'm going to pop this up. I'm thinking this would be really adorable back here. Oh, that's so cute. So I'm going to mount some of this. I just cut a piece of my scrap down. It's five by six. So I made this four by five. Maybe should have done a bigger border. We'll see. Okay, I'm using the AdTech glue. Was given this and did a giveaway of the tape runner. Could also do it at an angle. That would be cute. Okay now, but I think I want to pop this up. Okay, 
Now, one more thing. Now, I am going to take this score tape and put it on this. I granted I don't have very, I don't have quite the right size of cardstock, so I'll have to trim this off. And then I just got this die um, as a freebie from um, scrapbook.com. They were doing a special where all you had to do was pay for the shipping. Oh, I didn't realize it was two parts. How cute. Nice. So I am going to run this through my die cutting machine. It says, hello. Only I just realized I need to put this this way. Okay, so I went ahead and used the little shadow thing and cut that out on white because I realized this is going to be busy paper here and you might not be able to see this um, green cardstock really well. And when I peeled it out of the die cutting machine, the uh, sticky backing already came off. So I just have to stick it. At that if you don't put the O on there it says hell. Oh I love this script. That is really pretty. And now because I backed it up on that white you can see it really well. That is really cute. So let's glue that in place. There we go. Perfect. Now, if you have a little ladybug button, you could put that right on your card. So, I have one right here. Well, I can't find my shank remover, so I'm going to see if the Tim Holtz scissors will do this for me. Oh, perfect. Okay. And, whoops. I'm going to get my glue and affix that. So, let's see where we want the ladybug. Right there on the petals there. So I'm going to put this on there, let it set for 30 seconds, and then I will apply it. This is the Better Ultimate Adhesive. So there you go. That is a card using the watercolor pencils, and it is so beautiful, and I think you're going to love these pencils. Okay, as soon as I walked away from that, I realized that this bottom border just needed a little help here. So, out comes the black rickrack. I'm just going to put that on here to make sure I don't get it all over my other paper here. And I'm hanging it off the end there so it will be showing down from the other side like this oh that makes such a big difference on the card i think now i can wash this and look how cute that just really made it pop right there perfect perfect thank you everyone for watching